So yeah, we all know that 2020 was a pretty bad year for most people. And even though most of us found ourselves with more time on our hands than ever before, it's still impossible to play all the games that come out in a year. And whilst you were killing it in Hades, eating your friends' faces in Among Us, or pushing people into bottomless chasms in Fall Guys, you slept on some of the best titles of the year. So with that in mind, here are 7 of the best games that came out in 2020 that you probably didn't play. If you have played any of these, then let me know what you thought of them in the comments below. And if you haven't, then let me know which one looks most exciting to you. Let's kick things off with Pumpkin Jack, a 3D adventure platformer that came out around Halloween. This fantastic homage to those older platforming heavy hitters of yesteryear that you spent your childhood playing was brought to us by one man, Nicolas Messonnier, and what a job he's done. The devil himself was bored with the peacefulness in the Ark and Seal Kingdom, so decided to curse the world, unleashing monsters, ghouls and undead on the unsuspecting populace. To combat this, the kingdom's champion wizard was tasked with defending the people and lifting said curse. To counter this, the devil has chosen his own champion, Stingy Jack. And Jack is tasked with stopping the wizard by any means necessary. So whilst you're technically playing as the bad guy, Jack has his own agenda and won't be controlled by anyone. The story is what it is, it doesn't need to be an award worthy epic, as this game is about mindless fun. It's about bringing you back to the early 2000s and tugging on your nostalgia strings. As this game deliberately invokes memories of titles such as Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Psychonauts and Medieval. And it pays homage to those titles fantastically. It's not tearing up any trees, it's not revolutionising or reinventing the genre, but it is a solid indie action platformer title that you will enjoy. The well designed characters, the tightly themed world and the witty dialogue are all reasons you should pick up this game. From one kind of platformer to another, this time out we've got a first person parkour indie title where you play as a robot ninja assassin wielding a katana in a cyberpunk dystopian world. I mean, if that doesn't make your head explode with excitement, then I don't know what will. The easiest way to describe this game would be Mirror's Edge meets Hotline Miami. However, that would maybe do it a bit of a disservice, as there's a lot more to this fast paced frenetic action platformer. The gameplay is the main driving force for this one. The storyline is a bit by the numbers. But whilst you're parkouring over platforms, wall running, zip lining, and using your augmented powers and katana to turn your enemies into elaborate shish kebabs, you'll hardly care about why you're doing this. This is a game that was made for pro speedrunners, and to those that love the beat your head against the wall repetition of the Soulsborne games. With insta deaths and quick respawns, it never slows down the insane pace, and repeating sections doesn't feel like a chore. On top of that, it's so cathartic when you finally ace a particular tricky section that you've been stuck on for ages. There's not much better than the feeling you get when you see that final enemy sliced in half in slow motion, indicating you've smashed that section. And don't worry, you won't miss a thing, what with the slick visuals rendering all the cyberpunky gore in its brutal entirety. You might have been let down by a certain other cyberpunk style game, but if you've still got a cybery itch that needs scratching, then this is a game you need to check out. Be warned though, it isn't easy, so you biscuit good son. Now this is one that I've already covered on my channel, so for a more in-depth look at Neon Abyss then go ahead and check out that video, I'll link it above and below. Vivo Games has given us a fantastic fast paced roguelike that is equal parts zany and punishing, especially as you progress further and further into the levels. The sleek art style and neon aesthetic is really appealing and goes really well with the frenetic action and booming soundtrack. Its main selling point is the unlimited amount of item synergies you can have on your character. Ever had two amazing items you want to equip to your characters in a game, but only one equipment slot? Well, that isn't a problem here. Unlimited items means unlimited items. The sheer number of weapons will boggle your mind as well, and the ridiculous nature of them will give Ratchet and Clank a run for the title of most absurd weaponry in a video game. This is a game you shouldn't take too seriously. I mean, for God's sake, one of the unlockable characters is basically John Wick. Legally distinct, of course. A, a Ron Wick, if you will. It's a game that you pick up to have some mindless fun with, and it certainly achieves that goal. So go ahead and check it out. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. But Jordan, this is like the red-headed stepchild of the XCOM universe, and XCOM 2 is the best turn-based tactics game ever made. It just can't live up to its big brother. Well, first of all, F you for using that term, gingers have feelings too, man. <laughs> And second of all, yes, although Chimera Squad can't live up to the billing of XCOM 2, it doesn't have to. I've seen some people online describe it as baby's first XCOM, 
And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with that. If you've never played a turn-based tactics game before, then this is such an easy and accessible way to get into the genre. And trust me, when you do, you'll be hooked. It's an entirely different direction for the series to take, and it doesn't mean it isn't insanely fun. This is what would happen if XCOM and Rainbow Six Siege had a baby. You have a multi-ethnic cast of characters. Everyone is welcome here in Chimera Squad. You've got your American gunslingers, your Indian demo experts, your, um, Mexican cyborgs, your Siberian snake people, your Australians, and many more. Each character specialises in a different class. There's support characters, a medic, close range brawlers and long range snipers, so it's going to be up to you to make sure your squad is balanced for each mission. It isn't the case of having four guys you always take with you and neglecting the rest, as you'll be taking on different terrorist groups that specialise in different things. Whether it's the Grey Phoenix who make use of their alien tech, the progeny with their psionic attackers, or the religious fanatics Sacred Coil who make use of mechanical units, amongst other scarier things. Whatever the challenge, you'll need to make sure Chimera Squad is stocked up to the nines with all the best weapons and abilities, so you can make sure to smash whatever is in your way. Ever heard of a little indie studio called Hello Games? I mean, nah, you probably haven't, they haven't really had any major releases or anything to be honest, but they're the architects behind an adorable little puzzle game called The Last Campfire. In The Last Campfire, you take on the role of a lost ember, searching for meaning and a way home. Trapped in a mysterious world, you have to travel deeper into these dark lands to discover other missing souls, strange creatures, and curious ruins. As you make your way around this peculiar world, you'll come across adventurers who have come before you, that, unfortunately, have been overcome with despair and loneliness, and have become forlorn. It will be your task to reunite these forlorn with their lost souls and guide them back to the healing light of the campfires. Of course, a puzzle game lives and dies on the quality of its puzzles, and the last campfire's little puzzle sections are varied and interesting enough that they don't become stale and repetitive. They're just the right degree of difficulty. Not too easy that they become boring, and not so difficult that you're pulling your hair out in frustration. Each one can be solved with logic, patience, and a bit of observation. When working my way through them, I seriously got Zelda vibes, especially the shrines from Breath of the Wild. Throughout your journey, there is always a sense of foreboding that you can't quite put your finger on or shake off. It feels as if something sinister or dark is just around every corner, but at the same time, you feel quite safe and peaceful whilst trekking around solving puzzles. The narration is beautiful, and reminds me somewhat of an indie title called Sea of Solitude from a few years back. A stairway opened into a dark forest. Ember could feel fear taking over. They'd washed up alone, somewhere very unfamiliar. It's just the right amount of information and intrigue, not too much as to give stuff away, and not too little so that you lose interest in its world and its mysteries. If you want to see more from The Last Campfire, then please subscribe, as there will be a more in-depth look, or possibly a playthrough, in the near future. Layer of the Clockwork God is possibly one of the most unique games I've ever played. It is a half-platformer, half-point-and-click adventure title with a large scoop of British comedy all mixed together. How does that work, I hear you shout in desperation at the screen? Well, it's simple really. This is a deconstructive look at the differences between modern and older gaming trends, and its tongue-in-cheek approach really works well in its favour. The game features Ben, a grumpy adventurer who is a throwback to the classic LucasArts titles of yesteryear, and Dan, an energetic platformer who aspires to be a famous indie side-scrolling mascot. Ben is able to solve puzzles by examining and using items he has collected upon the way. Using his intellect, he is also able to craft upgrades that allow Dan to perform new skills that are paramount in any platforming title, such as sprinting and double jumping. Dan is the indie platformer darling. He runs and jumps around the levels utilising Ben's upgrades, and even carries Ben when he can't be bothered to climb over simple ledges. Dan adds the speed and excitement to this game that most point and click adventure titles lack. Throughout the levels you get to switch freely between the two characters, however there are some sections where you can only play as one of the two. A personal highlight for me was playing as Ben when he is killed and sent to the respawn dimension, a bureaucratic nightmare run by literal dinosaurs. Think of any time you've had to deal with the council, and you get the idea. Ben simply refuses to get involved in any kind of running or jumping. 
therefore he walks around the levels quite slowly. You can however speed things up when he gets piggyback rides from Dan. The fast platforming sections balance perfectly with a slower paced point and click adventure, helping the game feel a bit more eventful. I am personally not the biggest fan of most point and click adventure titles. I just can't get into the gameplay. I often find them quite unintuitive and slow. If you're somewhat like me in this regard, then I have good news for you, because weirdly enough the point and click sections of this game were my favourites. Yeah, the pace slows down during these segments, but the humour and wit really carries you through it. And they are the most fulfilling sections of the game, and they make it totally worth your time. It appears as if Ben Ward and Dan Marshall have taken it upon themselves to create titles that take a serious look at and poke fun at all areas of the gaming industry. Lair of the Clockwork God is an interesting take on genres, and one that I've never seen before, and for that, it should be commended. The apocalypse has arrived. Your goal is simple. Make it 10 miles to safety. No. Oh, did I mention that the world is full of ravenous infected zombies? No. Did I mention that with every mile you travel, said zombos get tougher to kill? Oh, sorry, I must have forgot. Did I also mention that after dark, things get oh so much worse? And it's probably wise to barricade yourself in a house somewhere. Wait, what's that sound? Is that the sound of the nighttime Super Zeds hacking down your barricades? Oh god, what now? Well, you've got only one option left. Blast their faces off. This action roguelike brought to us by indie developers Trick Jump Games is a fantastic and unique addition to the zombie genre. A genre which, let's be honest, has been done to death recently. You're just an average Joe. The zombie apocalypse has come, and you need to get the hell out of Dodge. Luckily for you, we're in America, son. So every house, every building, every garage, every hospital, every room is stocked to the nines with every weapon you can think of. Will you stop off on your escape route to help others? Or just shrug them off. It's every man for themselves, after all. Get your own Molotov cocktails, because I'm about to flambe some undead. If you like the look of 10 Miles to Safety, then make sure you subscribe, because there will be a more in-depth look at it coming soon. So, that's your lot. What do you think? See any games that piqued your interest? Well, if you have, all their Steam pages are linked in the description below. If you've seen a game that you think you're going to pick up, then make sure you drop a like on this video. I mean, it's only fair, right? Anyway, thank you very much for watching, have a great day, and whilst you're here, why not check out these latest releases on my channel. See ya, bye!